What's up guys? Just doing a quick video now while Alf is awake and in a decent mood, aren't you mate? Doing a pickup video and a quick review of Revival from this weekend. It was such an amazing day, even better than last year. It seemed like it was almost twice the size. Um, it's going to be a while before we get our proper sort of day review video up. Um, just because the uh, situation with Rudy's laptop at the moment, we like to put our videos, videos out at the same time. So that will come later on. So. You know, keep a look out for that. Please subscribe now so you get a shout um, when obviously that comes available. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick pickups video because it was always a bit hit and miss whether I was going to get much there, but um, didn't get anything in the expensive sort of rare categories. Just pick up some really, really cheap things for the collection. I actually managed to get a big haul for, for my wife as well of um, really incredible cheap sort of Game Boy Advance and uh, PS2 games and stuff. I'll probably do a separate sort of pickups pickups video for my wife if I can get her on camera to actually do a pickups video with me maybe because you know if we ask her nicely you never know do you and you know she might be up for that since you're appearing in all these videos now mate aren't you so you know let's go right where do we start um right there was a person selling um just to add a crate of loose DS cards I think I've got a, a couple of for my wife in there as well um but I picked up um for a pound uh Smackdown versus Raw featuring ECW 2008. Um, never played the DS version of this. I think that was, they released maybe two or three years worth of wrestling games on there. Um, but it always looked okay. I think it's got touchscreen controls, which is a bit weird, but for a pound, as a, and as a wrestling fan, you know, I thought it'd be worth picking up and seeing. Uh, I also picked up, uh, I don't know if it was from the same guy, but for three pound, I picked up Theme Park on the DS, which I used to own. Um, I remember I picked this up shortly before I went and worked on the cruise ship very much plays exactly, well it's not exactly the same, but very much the same as the uh, PS1 sort of version of it. Um, but with touchscreen controls which actually suits a game like this. Um, there's a few other cutscenes and I think you have like a sort of an advisory person helping you out along the way and stuff. But um, yeah, not the most in-depth um, sort of, you know, building sort of uh, theme parky game. But still a lot of fun and for £3 it's good to pick this up again in the collection because I, I sold it years ago. And, you know the old saying old of hating, you know, selling old things. Well, pick them up again, three pound bargain. Um, <laughs> something a little bit dodgy. In fact, I think I've got uh, another game or two in, in my uh, bag still, but um, a guy, again, was selling Game Boy carts for a pound each. Legend of Zelda, um, Link to the Past, very much unofficial. Although the cartridge looks good, it's got all the full Nintendo logos and I gave it a test and it plays fine and the save date is fine, it already has someone's game save on there. Um, to be fair, some of the Game Boy Advance games I own are unofficial, it's, it's probably the, the one console you'll get tons of unofficial games sort of made for and, and whatnot. And yeah, it was for a pound back in the collection again, another one I used to own but sold when I needed money at the time because obviously this sort of game holds the price a little bit. But um, to be able to play it on the Game Boy Micro with squinty eyes, spot on. Um, before I get to the NES stuff, I'll oh, just... Uh, another cheap game I got. Um, there was a guy who was selling uh, PlayStation 2 games to eight for five pounds. So myself and Rudy, we picked up a few um, like between us to make up the eight. And again, a couple for my wife. Uh, one of them I got was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Uh, comes complete with the manual and the disc was in decent condition. Now Tony Hawk's 4 is actually one I never played. Like Tony Hawk's 2 is probably my favourite. Still got that. 3 I've still got somewhere I believe on the PS2. Um, but I dipped out of playing it for a while after this. I think I owned Tony Hawk's Underground years after its release. But this came in before that and um, I'd like to think it's it's still up there with one of the, the good titles and you know as part of the you know cost me less than a pound that did so bargain again um, <clears throat> uh, PS1 game I got this again for a pound these were a pound each from the same guy I think and the reason I mainly bought this is because I used to own this it's, it's a good simulation basketball game you know I actually prefer the sort of NBA Jam style games on, on from any era really because it's easier to pick up and play but um, this is the, the cardboard version with the rubber cover and um, I used to own this back in the day again you know I sold it um, and I thought this is quite cool to add to the collection again especially at this price again comes complete with quite a cool um, 
inlay basketball game um, basketball style yeah instruction manual so again just getting it back in the collection because the thing about collecting for me now is mainly initially getting the ones I used to own so it's important that we do that so there we go back in the collection um, before I get to the NES games that I picked up which was the main thing I was looking for when I was there is uh, <laughs> A couple of uh, a while back, I was thinking, as a massive Will Smith fan, I wanted to do some sort of, sort of somehow collaborate in gaming and Will Smith and make a sort of YouTube series. So I'm a bit step closer now, and I'm going to think I'm doing this show called The Fresh Prince of Gaming, and it's a talk about video games based on on Will Smith, which are probably few and far between. But I've I've done well to add to the collection for both of these recently, uh, to, like over the weekend, and that's the Men in Black game for the PS1. Which I think I briefly remember playing on the PS on the PC. I couldn't really get into it. Um, as far as I remember, the reviews are pretty dreadful. It's a shame, really, because it makes you think that a, an idea like Men in Black could really turn into something decent as a game. And I'm sure there's been Men in Black games released since that I'll have to look into. And then Bad Boys 2, which again I believe got dreadful reviews at the time, but I do love the movie. Um, I think this was part of the uh, eight games for a fiver as well. So. Just for the sake of me doing this Fresh Prince of Gaming series that I want to do, um, I'll add that to the Shark Tale game that we uh, I already got Holly on the PS2, so, so we're coming together. So I might need a bit of help about what other Will Smith character based games um, are out there on the market. I'm guessing most are pretty dreadful. I'm, I'm probably thinking Shark Tale is probably going to be the best one by the time we actually play them. So um, yeah, more so for, for not just for the collection, but uh, for the sake of um, the show I want to do. Right, NES, so yes, it was um, a while back I wrote a list of all the NES games I wanted to pick up and it was mainly just ones I used to own or used to play a lot around friends um, and it was a lot larger list than I'd hoped. I was hoping it would be around the sort of 20 plus games and I'd be able to pick them up and it wouldn't cost me too much and, and um, yeah, unfortunately it ended up being like 40, 50 games or something, which I was like, wow, was kind of, that's why the, the console resonates with me so much, because they're the games I remember. Well, I picked up a few of the budget ones while I was there. I could have spent a few more on the higher ones. Marble Madness, five pounds. Real good bargain, that. Great game. Um, this is the version I remember as a kid. I think some people slate the controls a bit, but I guess any version of the game that isn't the trackball original is hard to sort of uh, be a favourite, but I, I love this, the music, the graphics, just a lot of fun. Uh, Rudy got me an early birthday present, RC Pro-Am, price of £6, I think he got it down to a fiver. One of my all-time favourite racing games, again, adding back to the collection. Um, if you've never played RC Pro-Am, um, it's, it's a beautiful, fun game, and as far as one-player racing games go, it's really unique, special game. And then, the real budget, but more for the memories, is kickoff on the NES and this is mainly because when I bought my NES although I had played the NES for a good year or two prior through friends and stuff um, this is the game I got with my NES it was pre-owned and you could pick a game and there wasn't a lot to choose from at the time and I think my neighbour convinced me to get kickoff because he was a big football fan there was probably a lot better games I could have picked but we went for kickoff and um, so again for the memories and for the sake of the collection four pound couldn't say no you got the hiccups, mate. We're going to feed you again, aren't we? But yeah, pick up some revival. What a show! I mean, it was great. It was just an awesome show. When this lad's old enough, we'll be taking him along. Um, again, like I say, we'll do a proper review of the show with the video when we can. But I just want to give a shout out to the guys we met while we were there. Um, you know, it was really cool to. Uh, we met a guy who um, who recognised Rudy when we were just sort of boarding the train from Birmingham to Walsall. We got chatting. He's a wrestling fan, he's a tuber himself, so I'll pop his link in, in below. Uh, we've got my Let's Talk Retro, which is awesome to see them, because it's been you know, two years since we've actually met them guys at London Gaming Market and stayed in touch on YouTube ever since. You know, It's really cool to see Colin and James there. Uh, two to UK, great to see you there, mate. Um, sorry I didn't get to stay and chat for long, it was such a, you know, we, we couldn't stay as long uh, for the day, uh, you know, as, as for the full day so it was just a case of sort of trying to catch up with people where we could um, and Rudy sort of caught up with a lot of the sellers he knows as well so you know it was a lot of the YouTube videos I watched on Revival since the same it's all about the meetup and stuff and 
it really is, you know, it's, it's about meeting new people, like-minded people, people you've met online through YouTube and through, through selling pages. Um, and then you're just surrounded in awesome arcade. Um, yeah, and Ninty Arcade as well. He was there with his machine, so, um, you know, it's good to see Skyskipper there, you know, that, the whole story behind that's awesome, so check that out. Um, so much to say, but, you know, we'll, we'll let the visuals do the talking when we get our video up for it. So, yeah, please subscribe so you can keep a lookout for that. Go check out Rudy's channel as well because I know that will be on there as well. So for me and Arthur, appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you've played any of these games before. I know some of them aren't particularly uncommon. And we will catch you soon, hopefully with the full Revival Generation X video. Plus more Black Arrow game talk. Plus this Fresh Prince of Gaming idea that I'm going for. So cheers guys, we'll catch you very soon.